Hey everybody, it's Party Lead. Welcome you back to another episode of our Planet Zoo franchise mode. Let's play. We're gonna dive right back into Elite Zoo South with a lot I'm hoping to accomplish. No time to waste. Let's hit that resume button. There is going to be a time lapse today, and hopefully the time lapse will see us complete quite a few different things uh, that I've been hoping to complete well for a while now, and, and hopefully it'll come to that completion point today. Uh, and the the plan or the hope is that. Uh, after the time lapse today, after today's, you know, sort of work across the board, next session, I'm hoping to add a new animal. Uh, not going to give away exactly which animal I'm planning on adding because I have a couple of ideas in my mind with regards to what I think will be a fun next step. Uh, it might be an African animal, it might be an Australian animal, or I guess I should say an animal from Oceania if we are talking about potentially uh, doing the... Uh, the um, Komodo dragon in our quote-unquote Oceania section again if we're if we're adapting it to that which seems to be a fairly popular opinion a fairly popular uh, approach being uh, suggested in the comments um, but what I think we're going to do first things first is go ahead and flip the time to a nice bright vibrant noon um, so we have you know the sun more or less directly above us it makes it so much easier to get uh, work done because I would I would like to actually dive into the time lapse right off the bat over here uh, a fair bit I would like to complete in a couple of spots, like I mentioned earlier, or at least like I think I mentioned earlier. But before we dive into that, just want to mention very quickly, folks, if you've been enjoying the series, well, you know what to do. If you'd like to see it continue, please don't hesitate to keep letting me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. It does make a massive difference in how I approach content on the channel, what I do more or less of, and just how I go about doing it, what I do, when I do it. I got some excellent suggestions and ideas and thoughts and opinions, for example, in the comments of the previous episode with regards to my query about... Um, you know, potential uh, African themes and ideas that I should be looking into. Uh, there were some things that were that confirmed my sort of expectations, like confirmed what I was already thinking. And there were some suggestions that introduced me to new concepts entirely. So you know, that kind of stuff makes a huge difference. It also makes a difference with regards to, uh, you know, what we uh, what we prioritize and things like that. So uh, so do keep all that coming. Uh, also, it seems that um, and I, I might be mistaken, but it seems that YouTube is uh, messing around with the notifications again they, they tend to do this every once in a while and not everybody is getting notifications for my planet zoo uploads anymore so folks um just a heads up that i will relatively consistently always stick to the schedule and that is tuesdays thursdays and saturdays at midnight eastern time that is utc minus four I will almost always have a Planet Zoo video up at those times and days. If I do not, or if you're wondering why didn't I get a notification, check the channel. There should be a uh, there should be a video, and if there isn't one, then there is likely to be an explanation either in the community tab uh, on on the YouTube channel, or in the Discord, or on Twitter. Less often on Discord. Usually, I, I splash it on on Twitter and. Uh, and the community tab. Uh, I feel like that's the quickest way to get the uh, the word out, I suppose. So, um, yeah. Yeah, YouTube's being funny with the notifications. Again, they do this every once in a while. Uh, nothing we can do about it, but uh, I figured I'd just remind y'all that there is a schedule that is Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, midnight Eastern time. Um, UTC minus four right now. It, might, it will change when daylight saving happens. I forget when that happens, but daylight savings is a little bit different. It, it starts at a different time, or I guess ends at a different time. Whichever it is, daylight saving is so useless. Um, it, it's different in North America and in the rest of the world, or something like that. There's a, there's a difference somewhere. Some people don't even have it, so it'll it'll shift a little bit. But midnight Eastern time is 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 the time. Anyway, okay, I've been rambling about that for far too long. I think it's about time we get to uh, get to work, right? Uh, again, lots to get done, lots to accomplish. Hopefully, we manage it all. I'm trying to figure out where exactly I want to start. I think. I think, I think, I'd like to start over here instead. Initially, I was going to start in the uh, the entrance section, but uh, you know we touched on that a fair bit last session, so I feel like we've spent some time there. Uh, but we have neglected our space down over here. Not really, but you know it's been a while since we've uh, given it full attention, and it is definitely in a relatively incomplete state. So, folks, hopefully we'll be able to accomplish everything. If not, we'll at least accomplish this one thing with today's time-lapse. I hope. 
Ladies and gentlemen, it's time lapse time. All right, folks, this time lapse is a pretty good one. I'm pretty happy with the uh, the end results of it. Um, as is tradition, of course, I have set the bar too high for it with regards to the types of things, or rather the, uh, the, the variety of things that I wanted to accomplish, and we are only uh, really going to stay focused on this enclosure over here and trying to get it uh, closer to complete. I would say we are pretty much there. Just a couple minor things I might want to do afterwards, but... Uh, no, actually, hold on. Uh, that's, uh, I, I, that's not entirely accurate. We focus this time-lapse on this area it does go beyond this enclosure so uh let's uh I, I should be fair to myself and uh and it's it's not just about the enclosure we do a bit more than just the enclosure and i am very happy with uh with the end results I, again like i said there might be some small tweaks i might still want to make here and there but uh, but overall we are you know, very close now first order of business was actually to adjust the height of the terrain over here uh at first i went too low and then i kind of split the difference over here uh, the reason for that being that i felt like the uh the, the, the platform, if you will, the plateau, was a little too high, and, uh, you know, kids might not be able to see the animal as clearly, and that obviously is not a good time, so just adjusting that a little bit uh, before we start putting stuff down, and, you know, before I regret not having done it sooner, uh, and then just, like, trying to get this shape exactly right, using a uh, modern... Uh, not, not modern, but new world piece over here to build a barrier. Initially, I was going to piecemeal build the barrier myself separately but i feel like the uh the right pieces don't exactly exist as separate entities uh at least not not pieces that exist as separate entities that don't already exist together like you know like something like this uh so i went ahead and used this and you will notice i go through and uh adjust the rocks as well just to make the space seem a little bit more interesting just to add a little bit more of uh you know sort of dimensionality to it i guess so it doesn't just feel like platform with glass and then some soil and then some rocks i don't know i feel like this at least integrates the space a bit more nicely it feels a bit more intentional and it feels a bit more uh, uh like a barrier almost it, rather sorry it feels a bit more like the terrain is actually raised uh rather than it just being somebody you know at the beach piling sand on into like a little mound it feels like it's actually the ground itself has shifted over here for whatever reason you know whether it's an actual shift or if it's uh erosion or what have you whatever it might be i feel like it makes the space feel a bit more real uh, so to speak now uh pretty pleased with uh, with how that looks just making a couple of adjustments so we don't have as much tiling going on um but yeah that's the uh you know transition space kind of uh taken care of gonna move some of these plants down and i actually adjust some of the uh, greenery in this space as well it's actually been pointed out to me that uh, and 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 this is absolutely accurate and i've known this is my weakest point uh forever uh, it's been pointed out to me that like my weakest point is uh, vegetation and just uh, flora in general and I uh, like just just to be 100% clear no offense taken or anything it is 100% accurate I know it's my weakest point uh, so it's definitely something I want to work on improving for sure um, but for now just kind of going with the flow of what I'm familiar with before I work on uh, in, like doing some research or finding ways to improve that aspect of things uh, but uh, but with that said I am quite pleased with how this section ends up looking after we put the mulch down and the little uh a rock barrier if you will and adjusting the education boards and stuff i feel like the space feels a bit better already um so maybe it's not uh, maybe it's not the end of the world in this particular scenario uh, but it is something that i constantly think about of like i should get better at uh at uh, digital gardening if you will um but you know just spreading some more uh, some more of these flowers around as well just to bring more life into the space bring a bit more variety into the space as well and feeling really good about how it actually looks uh, next step is to make the enclosure itself a little bit busier too. add a couple more elements here and there, getting some of those vines in and uh, just again, just some decorative elements. Something to be careful of, unfortunately, is that the animals are very picky with the coverage from plants. And uh, I do wish the game was a bit more lenient on that front, um, but uh, we, we managed to work around it just fine, but it does uh, we do have to stay very wary of that as we as we put pieces down. You can also see me putting down some rock pieces to, again, just try and break up the terrain a little bit. I find it's become, it's it's a little bland, I guess is the best way to put it. It's a little bland, a little, uh, it's a little bit uh, repetitive, things like that. Uh, so just really focusing on how the um, enclosure itself can have its textures broken up a bit more. And also, uh, I, I eventually, in, in just a moment's time, we'll try to make the entry 
seem a lot more interesting. And I think it, when I say in just a moment's time, I think I mean literally in just a handful of seconds. Over here, just adjusting the barrier a little bit. Again, I'm actually immediately, like right now, struggling with the uh, the coverage situation with the uh, with the trees and whatnot. Just fiddling and, and, and nudging and, and tweaking barriers and, and what's included and what's not to try and get myself a little bit more uh, opportunity, I guess, with vegetation. Uh, again, it's, it's a little unfortunate. I do wish the game was a little bit more lenient, but uh, it is what it is. We, we make it work. Um, getting some rocks down again just to try and make it feel a bit more legitimate and then finishing off the little uh, barrier section over here as well. Um, by, by which I mean the actual, you know, the structure of it, not the uh, not the null barrier itself. Uh, unfortunately, even just adding one piece of vegetation in there, as you made it, might have noticed, uh, makes the animals very upset. So, uh, yeah. A little unfortunate. Not the end of the world. Uh, next step is to add some rocks to the top over here. I just felt like it needed a bit more rigidity and again, maybe just a little break in the texture and, uh, and a little sh shift in, in how it feels and looks. So spend a little bit of time just adding in a couple of rocks. And I know it feels kind of silly maybe, but uh, it, it does change. At least for me, it changes how this section feels. Um, just by having the rock texture on the ground, it's still very round. I, w I wish it had like a bit more of a roughness to it, uh, but these rock pieces are absolutely gorgeous. So they do the trick, right? Uh, but I think after I put the rock pieces down, I will go in and adjust the terrain a little bit as well, just to make sure it kind of uh, blends in nicely. Uh, and, and I am pretty pleased with how this ends up as well after the uh, you know adjustment to terrain and everything is done. Um, again, every little bit counts, I find, with something like this. It's such a large space. It doesn't feel... There you go, adjusting the uh, terrain now. It doesn't feel like such a big space because it's so narrow, but it is. there's so much real estate that making it all interesting is... Uh, you know, it's, it's a bit of a challenge. Um, adding more vines over here to break up the, the wall as well because, again, we have that same kind of bland, repetitive texture... Uh, that same color across the board. So just trying to break that up a little bit if possible. And, uh, oh yeah, just move the uh, food up front a little bit so guests are able to, um, when the animals are eating, the guests are able to get a much better view of it. And over here you can see I'm kind of like <laughs> contemplating the life decisions that have brought me here. I was looking up some references uh, to build this uh, entry space over here. Part of me was toying with the idea of building like the hull of the HMS Beagle or something like that. Uh, but I, I tossed that aside. I was like, nah, you know, I don't want to do anything too um, built, too man-made, if you will. I want it to feel a bit more natural. But I really wanted to emphasize the uh, the transition from uh, from the, I guess, from the more constructed spaces, because you know the uh, the jaguar enclosure and everything they they are pretty well built up, right? From the more constructed spaces to the more kind of natural space. And uh, I decided to pull out these uh, dynamic mossy rocks because they're they're dark, so they make the space feel dark. They add a bit of that you know that sense of mystery. Um, they have the moss growth, which implies you know that there is some moisture in the air. There's a, there's a certain feeling or idea that comes with with moss, right? Uh, so we get that in, and 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 we build this entire like kind of cave section using that very dark rock. And I, I think it looks quite nice. It was a challenge definitely to integrate it into the much more, you know, sandy looking rest of the uh, space. Uh, but even as we like roll through it, and we'll do so afterwards as well after the time lapse, I mean, uh, you can see the change it makes to lighting, the change it makes to the experience and, and the feeling it if like the, the feeling it evokes when you look upon the space walking through the Jaguar enclosure uh, is completely different because it's so much kind of darker. Um, I'm personally a big fan of it. You can add some vines and stuff to this space as well to make it really feel like you're transitioning from one thing into another. Uh, adds a bit of like you know depth and, and life to the space too. I didn't want any of the extremely low hanging ones. Of course, I don't want people tugging on them or having to walk through them or anything. Uh, but yeah, like I really like how the uh, how how it feels, and I believe this might be actually where I make a couple more adjustments. Oh yeah, just gonna expand extend the uh, the rocks a little bit. Just trying to make that transition make sense, I guess. Tough one. It's a tough one. Hopefully, I do it justice. I just realized I covered up that camera. Uh, it's not a big deal. The game still, you know, sees through the rocks and stuff, but I should maybe move the camera to be on top of the rock. Um, but yeah, here is a pretty major change. One that I think was necessary and one that I think really finally makes this, uh, this space feel like what I wanted it to feel like. It's the minorest of adjustment, but you can see as you roll in now, 
as you come across come around that bend the the tree canopy is being so much lower really makes it feel like you are in a space rather than looking up and trees have been planted on the roof above you you feel like you are among those you know the the, the dense uh tree cover and, and whatnot I, I think so at least maybe i'm maybe i'm maybe i'm wrong but that's that's how i feel um apart from that going to be working on some of these you know shop coverings and things like that like that's what i said but we didn't just build the enclosure we did do work around the enclosure as well we've got a fair bit done um and i'm, I'm quite pleased as well actually i'm really happy with how this integrates uh you know nothing too wild nothing too out of this world if i'm completely honest but it you know it integrates nicely maintains that cave feel maintains that uh you know kind of uh more natural ish feel obviously there's these are stores with you know like banking machine like uh machines for your card and transactions and stuff like point of sale machines so it's not natural but you're trying to trying to blend it all in a bit more nicely i guess uh, and then yeah trying to just figure out where the uh, the dark rock can begin and end and still feel natural and good adjusting the train as well but uh overall pretty pleased with yeah the experience over here and uh oh yeah there we go decided that uh, the the repeating textures over here were very very grating and, and needed some kind of a break again as i've said a couple of times before already during this time lapse uh decided to try and get these mossy rocks uh above the water because i was like okay maybe 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 that makes sense maybe if we can just like blend it in properly get a little bit of the moss exposed it'll feel like you know it's uh, a slightly different area the the water has maybe uh eroded the 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 ground or or the soil or the whatever the the walls there a bit more and so some of this darker rock has been exposed. I'm not sure how I'm explaining it away in my head, but that's uh, that's kind of what I've got in mind. Uh, then comes the time to drop the name in. And the thing is, this name actually is in my head uh, only for, or rather not only, but this name applies to the entire area. Darwin's Den is the food court as well as the enclosure. And I will touch on this afterwards as well, but uh, I'm still open to suggestions for names for the enclosure and the food court specifically, but I thought Darwin's Den was a really nice nod to, you know, the extremely important history of the Galapagos Islands and whatnot. Uh, couldn't, couldn't, you know, can't leave home without that reference, right? Uh, really pleased with how this entrance space looks as well. Really pleased with how everything's come together. I hope you all are as well. If you are, you know what to do. Let me know down below, and if not, let me know as well. All right, folks, we are back from the time lapse at Darwin's Den, where we have spent most of our time, well, rather, I should say we have spent all of our time focused on improving this space. I mean, mainly the enclosure, a little bit of work over here as well. We will eventually do a lighting pass, which I think will reveal some more adjustments we'll have to make. And there are a couple, actually, as always is the case, there are a couple of tweaks I notice just as we go into real time and I start looking at things while talking about them, things start to stand out a little bit, but just gonna just... Just fix this covering over here. There we go. Nothing too crazy. All right, excellent. And I just gotta fix this one here as well. With a nudge and a push up over here. I think we'll do the trick. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah, so that's what I'm talking about. There we go. What did you a touch? Oh, cool. That uh, that does the trick for. Now now I'm starting to like notice all the little pain points here. You fix one, the rest stand out even more, eh? All right, there we go. There we go. All right, cool. <laughs> so yeah, we spent uh, we spent all of our time over here. Now, I feel like this enclosure still needs a little something. I'm trying to figure out exactly what that is. I, I noticed, and I'm, I'm sure I mentioned this during the time lapse as well, but I noticed that a little bit of color variation would go a long way. So just adding a bit of, you know, like mossy rock and whatnot, I think has helped a, a fair bit, if I'm completely honest. Um, just in breaking up the monotony of uh of the space just like it's just this constant like sandy brown all the way through that's a bit much it, it became a bit monotonous and, and and bland to look at so i feel like this color break is is quite helpful i might find a nicer way to try and disguise it into the uh into the the little canopy there uh but but i think the thing that this space really needs is a bit more greenery uh unfortunately unfortunately our tortoises here are already basically as you know greened up as they're willing to be i mean we're the the 50 during the time lapse i was at 50 percent. i think a couple of these vines have tipped us over to 52 percent, maybe um but uh, i mean we could easily just get rid of one of these trees i don't know if that one even counts for coverage over here as ah, a little it's a little unfortunate i mean it's like it's not like these trees are actually covering the uh 
the habitat, but the moment I get rid of the right one, you'll see it uh, drops it down. And even, even that just by a percentage, I don't know. It, well, be mainly because there's this right beneath it as well that has the same quote unquote coverage area. Um, that's how the you know game, I guess, calculates this stuff. It's a little a little funny, I'm not, not gonna lie. Uh, but like, I don't wanna take away from all that. I don't think, right now, the animal still says it's extremely upset about plants, but I think once we hit play, it'll be fine. Um, but all that to say this, I can't add more greenery in this area. I mean, I could move, well, the reason why all these are out over here is because I didn't want it to count as a part of the uh, coverage for our um, for our enclosure, but still find a way to basically add some some vegetation at the end there. If I could just get the camera at the right spot, there we go. Uh, to like add some vegetation at the end without it actually eating up, uh, you know, plant percentage, a uh, coverage percentage for the, uh, for the animal. Um, and I mean, I could I could shrink the enclosure a bit more and, and have some of that greenery come a little bit closer. But I don't know how I feel about that. Like, they have plenty of space, right? If we take a look at their... Um, I mean, they have enough space. I wouldn't call it plenty of space. They have enough space. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, something to think about for sure. I mean, and there's always the option of... I don't know if this will actually work. Let me actually check this. Um... There's always the option of doing this. If I pull all this stuff out, in theory, in theory, okay. In a way, I'm glad that doesn't work. Oh, that's kind of interesting how that, uh, my, my, my logic was if we uh, increase the space itself then uh, then the percentage will shift but of course i mean we have a strip of greenery right over here uh, and on top of that i'm sure um the, the difference isn't isn't drastic enough um but anyway I, i'm sure i'm sure we'll be okay my my bigger issue is yes i, I want to figure out what else i want to add over here uh, overall pretty happy with it though happy as well to see the animals like using the space properly as we saw last time i did adjust the waterfall as well i mistakenly put a murky one over here so that's been swapped out too uh and overall just like putting the stuff on the ground with the uh the um, mulch underneath it, I think, goes a long way. Want to make sure we don't hide any of the signs and stuff, obviously. Let's go ahead and nudge you forward a bit. Um, and then we can put some uh, some green right behind you over here. Yeah, sure. For now, that, uh, for now, that'll do the trick. For now. I say as I adjust it. There we go. Move you up a little bit. Boom. Done. Poking out the front. Of course you are. There we go. And I mean, the, the, the viewing angle, I think, is a lot better now. Like, if we go to this guy's eye line over here. This is a cool dude. <laughs> he, he, he looks like, if you look up cool dude in the dictionary, ironically or not, that's that's the face you get. I mean, from, from an adult's, from the average adult's uh, line of sight, you have a very clear angle. And from the kid's line of sight, roughly around here, you have... Pretty clear angles as well, I would say. So I think uh, I think that works quite nicely. Anyway, let's uh, go ahead and hit play. I want to see how the people react and respond to this space. Many of you were pointing out that um, <laughs> cool a turtle head is free. Oh man! Now we know that this kid recently had to go take a dump. <laughs> it's just extra funny because it's called the turtle head. Um. Also, the idea that he's gone to the turtle head and now the turtle head is free. I mean, there's there's layers here uh, that I want to move on from. Uh, finding a bin. Good on you, buddy. Good on you. Uh, you can get a good view of the Galapagos giant tortoise. Uh, the temperature in the... No, no, I don't care about any of this stuff. All right, well, well, we'll see how people feel about the views. The only concern I have is that this architectural piece might block the view, uh, as some architectural pieces... And do so we'll keep an eye out for that and the one thing i'm actually wondering is are we going to okay so darwin's den i got a lot of wonderful suggestions uh i i i'm partial to darwin's den because of you know everything that comes with it uh but i like the idea of darwin's den being this entire space not necessarily just the enclosure but like you know this is the section of the zoo called darwin's den uh it's got a little like cave area where you can imagine yourself being you know an explorer uh, who's who's taking notes about this animal, blah, 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 all that stuff. You know, you've got your food, you sit down with a snack, and, and whoever you are, whatever type of person you are, you're either drawing out the tortoises or you're just staring at them or whatever it might be. You know what I mean? A little bit of make-believe, right? 
Um, but then does uh, does the enclosure get its own separate name as well? And I have got a couple of great suggestions for that already. Um, but it's just a question of what do we all think? What do we all think? I'm curious. Because like Darwin's Den is the name of the space. I think that works great. I think we can call this, well, either something that's already been suggested. Again, I've got some good suggestions or feel free to drop a new one in the comments down below. And we can call this something else as well. Uh, you know, just pop a name down in the entrance. And it creates a whole kind of experience type of space. And I do have some plans for what comes next over here as we transition into Africa, which will make this all work super nicely, I think, thematically and, and from a storytelling perspective, as well as just from, uh, from what's going on over here. Uh, again, just to clarify, because I saw some concern expressed in the uh, in the comments, but just to clarify, this section, uh, the 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 uh, the comment itself, and I, I totally I, I greatly appreciate this because it's it's a good thing to be concerned about. Um, the comment likened this area to the polar bears at Elitsu North, and those of you that haven't watched season one, what happened at Elitsu North was that the polar bears ended up at the end of a section, and because they never looped back into anything else properly uh they were fairly neglected i mean they started getting some viewership down the line guests were making their way there but they didn't get as much as they should have for virtue of you know they're, they're polar bears you would expect them to draw some more attention uh and they were the most appealing animal in the zoo but basically you know five people and a horse were going to check them out uh, and the concern was, are we going to have that same thing happening over here? I, I don't think so. We shouldn't, because what's going to happen, just as a reminder, is this is going to loop right back into Africa. Uh, so as guests end up over here, they're not going to loop back into South America, but they're going to move forward into the Africa section up over here. We've got a lot of ideas, some great suggestions from the comments as well. So, uh, so this ends up being a part of that overall loop experience. And guests can get on the safari over here as well. It's possible to like you know, bring the safari down. Uh, you can get up over here as well and then go around. I'm really, I'm not going to lie, I'm really nervous about pulling the safari off properly. I'm i am honestly quite concerned that I'm not going to do a good job of it. Uh, no use dancing around that topic of conversation. I'm extremely nervous about executing that properly. I'm just going to put it out there right now uh, so you all know my... Uh, uh, just a, a concern I have moving forward. So hopefully we don't have to worry about that too much and uh, we can get work going there uh, ASAP. But uh, but yeah, that's the plan over here is this will loop back. You'll be able to take a ride into the Africa section. You'll be able to walk through the Africa section, whatever you prefer. And uh, yeah, we'll be, we'll be pretty good. We'll be pretty good. Or so I, so I hope. Folks, let's go ahead and hit play. Let's see what the guests think of the space. Let's make some money again. We're at 240k. Weren't we at like close to 299 or 300 uh, last session or two sessions ago? So let's try and make some money again, move on with the uh, with the time and dates as well. And hopefully, guests will stop being so unhappy um, once the litter gets all cleaned up. I might need to buy, buy, I might need to hire, sorry, some more um, caretakers as well, as was pointed out in the comments too, because we are coming very close to that 3k mark if we haven't already surpassed it once or twice. Uh, so having a couple more um, uh, caretakers is not a bad idea. Over here, meanwhile, let's go ahead and at Camp Capuchin make a slight adjustment and allow the station to be blocked. Sorry, it is allowed to be blocked. Okay, cool. We might need to make some minor adjustments if guests still continue to have problems uh, getting on over here. Uh, but back over here, I mean, I'm pretty pleased overall with how things have been moving. Why are, why are you empty over here? That's weird. There's still so much work to do. Um, we'll do it in phases. I think next session, uh, I, I wanted to get that uh, Darwin's Den section done and I want to get all this done today uh, but uh, realistically it's just it's not gonna it's not gonna happen always good to be realistic with oneself uh, with one's self sorry um, but we'll come back to it later I think it's time to add a new animal again I have a plan as to what it's gonna be but um, I'm keeping it close to the chest because I think it'll be a, a fun uh, there's a couple of options that I'm looking to go forward with and I think no matter which option I go forward with I think it'll be a fun surprise Nice to see all these crowds over here as well. Are you guys actually donating though? Because that's kind of a big part of this whole experience for you guys. There we go. Yeah. You are getting some money. That's good. Oh, are you playing with a sprinkler? Hmm. I've got some cool ideas as well for, uh, for, for the support structures around here. By the way, I'm really, really pumped to get those going. And I got to get these shop coverings happening as well. Animal is starving. That's unacceptable. Call the keeper. Has the game started bugging out a little bit as well? Again, many of many people have been pointing out that uh, they're having litter issues too. They're having you know people getting stuck on the path, issues, and that's really not good. 
really not good, especially when staff starts to get stuck. We'll see, I guess. Why are you still in a box? Unbox all animals. Oh, well, there's one of our babies. I was asked why the, uh, the Capuchin aren't having any babies. They are. They are. They, they had some recently, in fact. Yeah, these guys need to be taken care of. Cleanliness is a problem. Food is a problem. I mean, they're still accessible. Gotta keep her up in here. This is also kind of funny. That they can do this. I don't understand why that's a thing, but it is a thing. Now floating here. I could cover it, but if I cover it, then it gets rid of this uh, skylight type thing, right? Decisions, decisions. Um, Alright, where where was I? Where was I? Where was I going to go next here? There's so much happening. Is there trash on the floor? No. Looks like it stopped. Guests are still not super happy. Why is that? Kidding me? There's a bin right here, man. Right here. Protesters, why are you in here? Is it for the animal that we just took care of? It is. So they'll be gone soon, I suspect. Everything else is fine. Everything else is fine. Oh, no, there's a bit of litter over here. This needs to be cleaned up. Uh, where is our zoo staff? Go ahead and get you wandering. Nope. Pull you over to here. There's litter over here as well. This one, I just don't understand this. Like, I, it upsets me. Move you up over here. There. Take care of this, and then you can empty bins. No, what? You're literally, you're literally standing over here. Come on. Come on, I believe in you. I, I want to make sure this gets done. More guests getting upset. Oh. See that? There's litter on the path. It hits hard. Thirst. If you're thirsty, then why not grab a drink in yeah, any one of these locations over here? You can grab a drink. What is wrong with you? It is what it is. Um, now I remember what I was going to do. All the way back over here, I have some wonderful suggestions for uh, more store names. And I do need to get some more stores over here. Uh, to begin with, so let's go ahead and get some of that going. Uh, right, I was mentioning how I still need to make some store coverings. I have I have plans. I've got some plans that I'm super excited for. Uh, it's just a matter of actually just you know doing them and uh, <laughs> having the time to do them. Before I even go there, actually, I just realized I have more name suggestions over here that I want to pop in first. The Gulpy Soda is going to be Sakari Safari Sakari, which I'm probably butchering the pronunciation of. Uh, Sakari means sugar in Swahili. Uh, so it's the sugar safari. I like that. Gulpy soda. Just, I, I love how that, uh, <laughs> part of me wishes this was a, a, a gulpy slush just to really double down on that sugary feel, but no, no, no. Soda, same thing. I love it. Great suggestion. Uh, gulpy energy. I've got, uh, positive energy. There we go. Little lime pause. And we've got the, uh, Fries over here. Oh dear, right. <laughs> Cubs, spots. Boom. There we go. So these guys have all been named now. They still need to be decorated as well, but that's going to be a part of our uh, decoration process for the entire station. I really like how snugly they fit down over here and how nicely they, they've found a space, so to speak. Uh, so I'm excited to getting them, excited to get them decorated as well. Alright, back out over here. Let's go ahead and get to work. Question is, I think I'll put it right next to you. Uh, so we've got water over here. What am I going to put down next? Let's see. Where is the closest anything else? Everything else is over here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and over here, I'm going to put down, first of all, a rather an info center. And get their uh, adoption kits and their... Um, maps and all that kind of stuff. Info center down over here. Your name. Your name is... Where'd I go? There we go. Hop to it. And then I'm going to put down a new coffee shop. Here where it's a little bit colder. I mean, I, I don't know how likely it is that coffee's going to get too purchased over here, but we can try it out. See if it works out. 
pop you down over here. Your name is... Ah, didgeridoo Brew. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good play on, uh, like, didgeridoo, didgeridon't, didgeridoo-doo. You know, we've, we've, like, those are fairly, fa like, familiar. I love them just the same, but they're fairly familiar. Didgeridoo Brew caught me off guard. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you know. G didgeridoo Brew very much caught me off guard. Uh, and then I want to get a chief beef. I actually don't know how many chief beefs we have. I feel like this is, like, the second chief beef we've put down, which is a very weird feeling. Um, just like, how come we don't have more chief beefs? Uh, I, either way, chief beef with that adorable mascot gets put down over here as well. And you are going to be called... Learn something new with this one. Uh, Sangers, Bangers, and Mash. Apparently... So bangers are b bangers and mash. I feel many people are familiar with that terminology. Bangers are sausages. Mash is mashed potato. But apparently Sangers... If I'm saying that right... Is sandwich? Never heard that before. Um, I don't know if it's a Australia only thing or if it's a uh, uh, UK and Australia thing or if it's you know a, a, in New Zealand as well. It's not a Commonwealth thing because I'm in Canada and we don't say it. But uh, I'm, I'm curious. I've heard bangers and mash countless times. You know, it's a it's a restaurant, it's a menu item. People say it all the time. Like I'm familiar with bangers and mash, but Sangers never heard that term. So, yeah, learn something new. <laughs> I feel like after this um, after this series is done, I'll I'll be able to 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 to, to head over to to Australia and uh, pretend to be. I'm totally joking. Pretend to be a local. Um, absolutely joking. You can't 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 uh, learn that much off of uh, off of a off, off of a off of a series like this. Unless, I don't know, I guess I'll put myself to the test eventually. Definitely part of the world I've wanted to visit since forever. Definitely will happen eventually. What will happen, what will happen now is Guru Mara over here. I believe I need to put you in... Because they're fighting for, uh, whoops, they're fighting for alpha status. I thought that was supposed to be fine. Once an alpha gets determined... They're the ones that mates. There's. They're the ones that mate around. Uh, you seem to be stuck over there, so let's keep an eye over here for a second. Now, okay, we're good. Um, lions, as y'all have pointed out, lions are are a particular use case scenario because fighting for alpha status among lions means something particularly violent. Uh, looks like the chief beef is getting some business, which is good to see. Folks are hungry over here. I need like a few really cool animals, buddy. Buddy. You're right next to a kangaroo. I mean, okay, fine. We're in Australia. Maybe you're not too surprised by the kangaroo. We got lions. We got llamas. We got monkeys. We got anteaters. We got... What do you want? What do you want? Energy is low. Well, we have the eating here. I, I, I'm very curious, actually. I'm not sure if anybody uh, knows. But I'm very curious if the um, game separates... Picnic benches and regular benches, as far as sitting and uh, sitting to eat is concerned, like sitting for energy versus sitting to eat. Very curious. Can I put you down over here? Yes, I can. Well, I guess I gotta check which way you're facing, don't I? I really wish you could place these down a bit more particularly. Hopefully that'll work out. Put one down over here. One down over here. Yeah, that works out. Low welfare. Why is that? Nutrition. Hydration. Thirsty, you can go drink, right? Yep, they can get in over here. Alright. Hopefully that happens. Can't find an accessible... Oh, it must... What, is it just busy? Maybe. Keep an eye out for that as well. Lots of weird... I mean, every time there's an update, there's a lot of, you know, weird stuff... Weird stuff going on. This actually reminds me on the topic of weird stuff going on. Might be a good idea. It might be a good idea to maybe empty out our uh, <laughs> animal storage over here. Our uh, exhibit trading center over here. Is, uh, we have 136 animals and a limit of 50. So that can't be comfortable. Let's go ahead and quick trade them all out. 37k to be made. Uh, we've been picky. We've got good quality animals in all of our exhibits. So we're fine over there. So quick trade over here. Quick trade over here. Thank you. Done. A little bit of money made. 
facility broken down. Go ahead and get that fixed, please, with a mechanic. I feel like it's time to do a little bit of a hiring spree, if I'm completely honest. Uh, let's go ahead and do so. Go ahead and get... I'm going to say we even get a couple of vets. Leave them open to go wherever necessary. I want to go ahead and get a couple of caretakers and leave them free to go wherever necessary as well. Because there's litter everywhere. Um, things need taken care of everywhere across the board. So why not? Where's my other vet? You. Oh. Well, I guess I'm glad I put you down over here. Feeding red kangaroo, okay. Yeah, I feel like I feel like having more um, more vets is a, a good idea, just because we're uh, we're expanding a lot faster than our staff is, and and I'm sure I'm sure they're struggling. Good money being made over here, indeed. Okay, good stuff. You guys, continue to have fun up over here. Oh my god, I was like, is that a carcass? Not. Mummy is just taking a break. Okay, fair enough. Why are you so grumpy? Why are you hungry? You're hungry. Do we not have food here? We do not have food here. Why do we not have food here? When's the last time there was food over here? Okay, lose, lose twice in the last 12 months. Man, they look so cool. Just even seeing um, Salehe here just come out, like come around the bend. So cool. Now you're stuck here. Yeah, there's a lot of weird stuff going on with this latest update. I don't know how I feel about it. There's a lot of weird stuff going on. There's like animation stuff and uh, and all the, the, the litter. As, as someone so wonderfully put it in the comments, this is, I do not get credit for this, but the litter bug problem that we have, God, it's all good. Um, this is this is flowing nicely as well. That's all working nicely. I, I have been asked also to showcase our finances. I apologize for it not being done before, um, but if we take a look at our financial circumstances, a couple of refunds here and there. I think that's when the Jaguars escaped. That's a lot of refunds, actually. On the topic of escape, what's going on over here? How did you get out? How did you get out, buddy? You just you just waltzed over that, did you? Just walked right over that. All right, okay. Well, they're just so slow that it takes them so long to get there. All right, so this... Well, folks, if you noticed that this session was a shorter session than usual and were wondering why, you're about to get your answer. <laughs> uh, a little bit of unfortunate news, but the uh, recording crashed. Uh, no other way to put it. It crashed in the middle of my recording, and uh, it did so in a way that uh, doesn't actually tell me it's crashed, uh, which is always quite unfortunate, because if I knew it was crashing, or if I knew that it had crashed, then I could, you know, stop and restart or whatever, fix the problem. But unfortunately, what has happened is uh, I went through and did a lot of work, and most of it did not get recorded. So, to uh, cap today's session off, I'm going to actually go through and hopefully cover everything that uh, that happened between the crash and the end of the session. I'm just going to touch on everything and hopefully uh, cover all my bases and communicate everything that you've missed, and that'll be the session. So we'll probably get, we're probably going to end up a little bit shorter than usual. I do apologize for that, but uh, yeah a bit of an unfortunate situation. Uh, you might notice right off the bat, I don't think this was, uh, I don't think this has been, uh, this was a part of the recording from beforehand, but we have added sprinklers, or rather misters, I guess, and cooling um, facilities just in this area. I guess we're constantly complaining about how hot it is. We've cooled this space off, and now they're a lot happier about that. Up over here, we also have the, uh, the greatest, the most giantest of tortoises ever known to mankind. They're so cute. So cute. Look at how big they are. Um, but yeah, so we, we got uh, we got ourselves some uh, giant Galap Galapagos tortoise babies. Among them, we have Marco, who is not that great. And we also have Arturo, who's alright. We also have Marco, who is that great. <laughs> we got two Marcos from this uh, from this litter, or whatever we'd call it. Um, I mean, they're, they're all actually, I'm, I'm just joking. They're all decent stats, but there is one among them who stands out for sure, uh, so that's fantastic. Uh, I believe the editing actually died when, uh, or the editing. I believe the uh, previous recording died when we were having a bit of an, we were having the world's slowest escape go down. Um, so we fixed that by just adjusting the uh, the 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 edges, and there was a bit of an escape route over here as well. So we've adjusted the height 
on, on either end, and that should prevent the uh, tortoises from escaping. And I've actually done a check, but I'll do it again just for, you know, posterity. You can see that neither the adult nor the baby tortoises are able to escape from their space. I can't remember if I highlighted this conversation, but uh, just in case, I will highlight it again. Uh, personally, I'm quite a fan of Darwin's den being the name of this entire space. Um, so, again, Darwin's Den refers to the enclosure as well as the food court. But I think it'd be cool to have a separate name for the enclosure and a separate name for the food court. I've got a couple of great names for both already. Uh, I, well, technically, I have a couple of great names for the enclosure and one great name for the uh, food court space. Uh, so I'd love to see you know more suggestions or I'd even just love to hear what you guys think about that idea of having you know Darwin's Den be the name of the space and then the... Uh, and then the, the enclosure and the uh, the, the food uh, space having its own, you know, kind of sub names. We've done that before. Um, it, it's fun. It creates, you know, little areas of, of the zoo, I guess. So, so yeah, definitely liking, uh, definitely liking that myself. But I'd love to know your thoughts as well. Uh, beyond that as well, we also actually went through and decorated this space. These uh, stores that were right next to Llama Lane have been uh, built up properly now. And you'll see they are now at 100% attractiveness, 100% appeal, whatever you want to call it. So hopefully we'll get some more business out of them. And I do quite like how it looks as well. It, it I'm pretty sure we lost this in, in the crash. I don't know, it's a bit of a bummer. Because uh, as much as I can go back and highlight all the things that we accomplished, uh, it's very different from actually accomplishing them together. So I, I do apologize for that, folks. But uh, I mean, it is what it is. You can't. Technical difficulties are technical difficulties. Uh, but this makes me very happy to see done. In fact, actually, you know, I'm going to make a slight adjustment over here and duplicate this little column section over to here just to break this up a little bit more. Um, there we go. There, I think that just works a little bit better. Uh, but yeah, this space is now a lot nicer, I think, as well. Just, you know, allowing guests to, to not have to look at the ugly uh, encasing that normally comes with, uh, with these buildings, right? Uh, so that was done. And then we also managed to, what do we do? We managed to, well, I think we already got these all built and named and everything together. We already saw all that. Um, we saw the naming up over here. Oh, but something you guys missed or, you know, didn't see me do or about to see me reiterate is the plan with these little waterfall things up top over here. Yeah, okay, right. I was, I was like, where are all the visual effects? It's because I'm paused. Uh, so let's just unpause for a second here. Uh, the plan is to add little, like, um, little... Uh, interruptions in the in the pools as they were there was a great comment that was just like yeah they kind of look like big swimming pools and it's like totally but that's because we're not done yet uh the next step is to add a bit more life to them by putting in little logs or putting in rocks and things like that so these these aren't done yet um at, you know as it goes with everything nothing's ever really done right but uh but these aren't done yet there's still a lot more life to be um brought here there's still a lot of uh a lot of you know like uh set dressing and, and and scenery placement and things like that that uh, that need to be done over here so uh so yeah don't uh don't worry about that this this will definitely get uh, quite the upgrade uh very soon uh apart from that i believe I mean, what else was there we, we had a couple of new hires that uh, i think was before the crash um talked about this already there's a lot of like little stuff here and there that uh, that happened as well but obviously you know it's can't uh can't recreate every little thing. Uh, we do have huge lineups over here as well, which is good to see. Can't go on the main circuit because we don't have enough money. What? Then go to the ATM where you can get money. Hang on a second. That's a weird thing to say while you're in line. Or oh, did they did they say that and then go get money and now they're now they're coming in? I think I'll call it a day here, but you're lining up for what? What are these guys doing? What are these guys doing? Going home via main circuit? But you're right. You're right here. Why would you? Are you gonna go? Are you gonna do the whole loop and then go home? Oh, okay, sure, whatever. Um, apart from apart from all of that, apart from all that, we have uh, extremely happy guests again. We cleaned up the litter. Um, I think that all happened before the crash as well. I'm really trying to collect my thoughts over here. Um, five star zoo. Everybody's happy. All is well. Yeah, I think that, that that's that's pretty much the gist of it. A lot of like a lot of the work, obviously. Man, it's, I'm never gonna get over this transition. I love how. We go from like medium brightness, you know, we got like a little bit of light coming through the uh, the uh, openings, the skylights and whatnot, and then we go into this like really kind of dark space. It, it feels, I don't know, it, it, to, to me it just, it, it makes this experience so interesting as you transition from that to this space and you have these like 
so much greenery up top and all that. I don't think I'll ever get over this. Um, I, I quite like it. And uh, I did, at the end of the session previously, sense of deja vu for me, I did highlight this little family or group over here because they are the epitome of uh, what needs to be happening over here. They got their food, they got their drink, they have their uh, audio sets that they purchased from the um, from the info center and whatnot. They're sitting down at the picnic bench, picnic table, whatever you want to call it, uh, you know, drinking, eating, listening, ballooning, uh, chit-chatting, resting, and, you know, able to watch the uh, the tortoises as well. So, like, to me, this was this was a really nice uh, kind of highlight to have ended the, uh, the, the session on of just, like, seeing a group utilizing this space to its fullest. Uh, and I, I should also touch on this because I, I don't think it was there when, uh, you know, in, in what's left of the recording, but uh, this space was getting very busy, which is really nice to see. People are coming through. People are buying stuff. Uh, which is really, it's just really nice to see it all be used. As I've always said, it's nice to see when plans work out. Uh, but this in particular has made me quite happy to see just like everything coming together quite nicely. And I, I suspect these guys are, you know, overall pretty happy. I can barely see the glab. Okay, well, seriously, you're going to complain about that from where? You're, you're, trying to, you're trying to spot a baby from the furthest possible point. I mean, of course, you're going to be upset. That's a, that's a you problem. Not impressed by this view. I'm curious where they were. Like, I wonder if they're actually considering these the views okay so you know near perfect not perfect but nothing's ever perfect we'll we'll, we'll get it there we'll get it there uh, maybe i need to put some education boards up over here and stuff as well i don't know we'll uh, we'll sort that out but folks uh on this on this happy note of this group uh you know eating away and whatnot and on this adorably happy note oh, look at that look at that taking the taking the Biggest tiny step. Taking the biggest tiny step. Which is very representative actually of this session. We took a, we took a lot of big steps. Uh, they felt small, but they were certainly uh, I would say they were certainly certainly some large steps in terms of uh, moving towards completing some of our old tasks. Like I mentioned previously, folks, next session I'm hoping to add a new animal. Again, keeping it close to the chest as to which animal it might be. I have a couple of ideas for a couple of options. Feel free to throw your guesses or your desires in the comments down below, but I certainly have a plan as to uh, what we do next. This is where we're going to call it a session, though. Uh, again, I do apologize for the uh, the mishap. There's not much I can do about it, apart from apologize, which I will do profusely and repeatedly because it is just in my nature to do so. Uh, I do appreciate your patience and your understanding, of course. Uh, and I also appreciate, as always, my channel members and patrons who have been supporting this channel on a monthly basis, keeping us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time. Cheers.